But yes, video game. That would be good to play a video game, would it not? Really, in these awkward and shattered times of mental health difficulties and the world falling to bits, all we can really do is retreat into the world of the video game. Where goals are achievable and uh, villains can in fact be defeated. Potentially, perhaps. Hi Art, always nice to see you. So I have not played this. Also, I'm going to not talk over any actual conversation in this opening cutscene because that's how I go. I like to present the game as it is and preserve it as well as I can. Yeah, it should be... Uh, I've nearly finished the 4-3 frame I was going to use, so this would actually be a good opportunity to test it out, but I didn't get it finished by this evening, so... This feels like when they put the trailer for the game up as like a demo screen at the start. So I played the shit out of- actually, let me know if the volume is okay, whether uh, the ratio between game and my voice is okay, if the game needs to be quieter or whatever. Oh yeah, but twas ever thus, really. Games have loved to use cool pre-rendered CG to draw people in. Oh, fuck yeah! Nice. Nice. I forgot that the Genesis era games were when, when it swapped. Uh, no, the. Fuck. What are they even called? Uh, Select a file. Can I delete that? I don't know. But I forgot that this era of the Sonic games is exactly when they switched over to having, like, amazing Gennaro pop rock. Uh, volume, you volume. You can customize various options. Sound test. Am I seriously going to have to log out of the entire game to change tracks. the volume? <laughs> oh my you god, I am. That's ridiculous. These are the most, like, 2004 games imaginable, and for that reason I love them very much. But I am going to have to experiment real quick. It looks like... Okay, this is ridiculous. I actually have to reboot the game to change the volume, apparently. Unless... 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 Windows? Windows settings, perhaps, will solve my problem for me? Aha! That's better. Or well, somewhat better, anyway. I love Windows settings saving the day. So I haven't actually played Sonic Adventure DX, but I played through Sonic Adventure 2 colon subtitle battle a great many times as a kid. I had the um, GameCube version, of course, which is Sonic Adventure to Battle. So I've actually never played um, the original Sonic Adventure, so it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, how all of the astonishing plot lines that confused the hell out of me in Sonic Adventure 2 were set up and how they pay off. I'm joking here because the plot's nonsense to both of these. Should I read the instructions? Let's get him. How to play as Sun? <laughs> okay, that seems simple enough. Pick up, put down, throw, shake. The rules for the action stages. So, like. I think there are a lot of problems with translating Sonic to 3D, and I think these games failed in their attempt to do so, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> I actually miss a ton of uh, components of this era of gaming. I actually think that modern gaming is a lot weaker for just not having things like character select screens or... Oh yeah! This 
this is happening. Huh? What's up? These games are famously astonishingly janky, but um, DX or Director's Cut and uh, Two Battle as opposed to Two you are, uh, are both significantly less janky because they were the GameCube re releases. there should be humans in Sonic the Hedgehog games, except for Dr. Robotnik, and I also don't think there should be guns. <laughs> it's just a total tonal mismatch. Our billion dollar police budget was for nothing! Sonic, hell yeah, I love to do a murder at the Hedgehog. move, to be honest, to start your game off with a boss fight. When I was doing a test earlier to see whether the, the game would work at all for a, for streaming, because um, occasionally they don't, and I attempt to start streaming a new game and it just does not work. Um, yeah, when I was doing that, this, one of this, this guy's first attacks knocked me through the ground. <laughs> For all that um, I do miss a lot of things about this era of games, play with you some other time. I do think that we've... Um, yeah, actually, you're right. It does have some some of the similar vibes to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, but... Revengeance? Um, but yeah, I... The good is with the bad, and this is mostly bad, from what I recall. Or from what I have heard about this one, anyway. Come on, you big drip! Where are you going? I guess he was feeling pretty drained after that battle. You know nothing, fool! It's Chaos, the god of destruction! <laughs> Is that supposed to be surreptitious? I keep expecting characters to say things, and then there's just a continued panning shot. confidence in his buddy. Oh, what am I gonna do with you? See, translating these games, or translating Sonic the Hedgehog into a more modern setting raises a lot of questions that have never been uh, raised before. When Sonic the Hedgehog was a magic hedgehog who lived on the um, paradise planet of Mobius, uh, which only had one human being, which was Dr. Robotnik, it made a lot more sense. You know, there's only about five animal people in the entire world, and nobody really questions why there are five animal people and everybody else is a normal human being. Like, these games end up with a very particular and peculiar tone, which is not necessarily a problem, but which I don't think really does Sonic the Hedgehog any particular favours. Now that I think about it, I have actually played this opening level exactly one time before in my life, and it was when I was in hospital as, like, a 14-year-old, um, where they had a, a, a Dreamcast set up for the children's ward, and uh, for some reason it was set to, like, demo mode and you could play just this first level over and over and over. So that's the extent of my experience with Sonic Adventure. But as I said, I've played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle just like a million times. And one of the things I've noticed is that like 
the controlling system is really kind of awkward because the way it works is that you're expected to push forwards always and when the camera goes crazy and moves around you're not supposed to stop pushing forwards. Forwards is always the way you should be going, which sounds like a good idea, like, at its base level, uh, for translating, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog's classic 2D speed platformer gameplay into, um, into 3D. And it, if, it, if that system worked, it would be great. <laughs> Uh, the problem is, it doesn't really play nice with its own physics half the time, and um, you very often find yourself stumbling constantly to a stop when you shouldn't be, um, or losing momentum and falling off things. Um, just because of the way the 3D you know, world is arranged and programmed, there's, there's tons of hitboxes that you clip into that you shouldn't really be touching. But, um... I'm not a Sonic nerd, but I did always enjoy the Sonic games. When I was when I was little, I used to go over to my friend's house and we would just play Sonic the Hedgehog. Loads and loads and loads and loads. Sonic 2, specifically, which is probably the best Sonic the Hedgehog game in my humble opinion. But I haven't played a million of them. There are a stupid amount of Sonic the Hedgehog games out there available to play of varying degrees of quality. I also kind of always have enjoyed the degree of ambiguity between, like, the canon of Sonic the Hedgehog. There's no, there's no rigidity to it. There's just a whole bunch of weird shit that happens, and you know, are the earlier Sonic the Hedgehog games canon to the the 3D Dreamcast Sonic games? If so, how? <laughs> Doesn't matter. That's not a question you're supposed to be asking to begin with. I did not have a Sonic OC of the Donut Steel variety because I never really had OCs of any variety. Um, for, all, for, for all that I've always been an artsy type, I've never just had that kind of brain. I don't know. I'm all right at designing a character to a brief, but I've, they don't really they don't really come to me fully formed, you know, in my brain. Um, I don't really think about my own designs for things. I wish I had. Um, I suspect, ironically, I'm the wrong kind of autistic. Because, you know, making making fan characters is something I actually do associate not unfairly with autistic people, Jump but it's not something one. that's ever just functioned in my brain. So it tells you to do that, but if you take the alternate route and go up the... I'm gonna die, probably. <laughs> But if you um, jump around and go on the, the bouncy bouncers, then you actually get a bunch of coins, that, uh, rings that you wouldn't get otherwise. But also, I think partly, I was never 100% locked sufficiently into any one fandom. Um, I've never had fandom brain, which is ridiculous, because I have completely obsessed over many things in my life. Um, but I think there's just some kind of fundamental disconnect between the way a lot of people yeah. of fandom brain variety and I interact with things, even if it might superficially look similar with simply lacking the kind of creative aspects, maybe? Oh, I only got one life. Yeah, not bad. What did I get two? I can't believe I only got C rank. Hey, Sonic! Long time no see, huh? I'm just glad you're okay. What happened anyway? You're too good of a pilot to just crash like that. That was a test run using a new photo. Hi. And also, thank you for the follow, whoever that was. My stream manager doesn't currently tell me. Thanks, but you gotta check out my newest power supply. Ta-da! Whoa! A Chaos Emerald! Yep, I just happened to find one of the Southern Emeralds during one of my test flights. Oh, you just happened to? This thing's got unlimited power, you know. So I figured, why oh, not hi. use it to power my plane? Supercharge! You gotta come over to my workshop, Sonic. I've got something I've gotta show you. It's in the Mystic Ruins. The fastest way is by train. Let's go! That's... <laughs> There's just some kind of a fundamental psychological disconnect going on when the writer of a Sonic the Hedgehog game writes the line The fastest way to get there is by train. Like, that's just... There's something something ain't right about that. 
Anyway, it's nice that they also decided finally to put Bikini Babes in the Sonic game, even if they do only have six polygons each. I am curious as to how much of the flavor of the original um, is preserved in the... Well, it's not a remake, it's... What do you call it? Uh, a remaster? Well, it's a director's cut. Literally, it's called the director's cut, so... How do I go back to the... It won't let me leave. <laughs> I'm stuck here forever. Oh, the door, of course. That invention that we have had for several thousand years now. God, I really miss Dreamcast era games. I... <sighs> the low poly, you know, businessman with his low poly glasses. Take the train to the Mystic Ruins. So as I understand it, there's several different plot lines of this game for the various different characters and you can, can progress through each of them at different rates. So you could completely complete Sonic's storyline and then completely complete Tails' storyline. Um, or you could alternate and do one character then another character. Can I? Excuse me, sir. Thank you. Cute couples get in free. Okay, so I assume that that's a hint that I need to... I need to get Sonic a girlfriend! <laughs> the most 2002 idea imaginable. Of course, Amy Rose did, does actually originate in the 2D Sonic games, with the, the last of the old school 2D Sonic games, Sonic CD. Which is supposed to be the best of them, although I never actually played that one. Um, I didn't get a copy of it until the Sonic Gems collection. Oh no. Sega Gems Collection, whatever it is, came out, which I actually have on the PlayStation, which is um, deeply ironic if you think about it. Now, how do I go to the menu screen? If I want to see Tails' first chapter, which will probably explain to me why Tails chose to crash his plane. Tails, the character who in this reboot of the franchise is established to be the technological genius and the one who's really good at flying planes. Um... Maybe if I exit, that'll take me back to the title screen, and then I can try Tails' first chapter and see what his whole deal is. Select your character. Hell yeah, Tails Miles Prower. Here I come, Sonic. I know. See, I really like the vibes of this era of games. I think a lot of the design of the actual gameplay is terrible, but. It was a Wild West where a ton of really interesting ideas were actually implemented and included and worked great. Everything's working great! See, he agrees with me. All systems go full speed ahead. Uh-oh, what's this? At this point, if no! I... If I remember correctly, Tails is canonically an eight-year-old and Sonic is like 14. Because they introduced a lot of really curious and strange concepts to the to the setting when they decided to take it away from you know animal people world and set it in human world with just five animal people for no no explained reason. Oh, okay. So there's no explanation whatsoever as to what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this has filled in no gaps whatsoever. Boy, you're lucky I saw you come down. So what went wrong anyway? It's not like you to crash like that. Yeah, it's just that I'm testing a new prototype power supply, and it's not fully compatible yet. You can always borrow my plane, the Tornado, if you want. Oh shit, is this like a Rashomon type thing? But if I can make this work, it'll run circles around Because yours. we just saw this conversation from Sonic's side, and it was definitely not this conversation. <laughs> it's a Chaos Emerald! No way! I was lucky to find one of the seven Chaos Emeralds. They have unlimited mystic powers. Now I want to harness that power to fly my plane. So what else is being my workshop in the Mystic Ruins and I'll show you what I've been working on. We'll go to the station, hop on a train, and get there in no time. 
Maybe I've misunderstood. I was always told that it was separate storylines that you could play through. Is this just where Sonic lives? Is he an aqua hedgehog? Is that why he's blue? Uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, I don't remember. Anyway, I, I heard it was different storylines that you could play through. Uh, that would interact with each, with each other and fill in the gaps so that you could find out what was going on. But um, here we are picking up exactly where we left off 30 seconds ago. The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. God, I wish I had a good dream. <laughs> Straight up, the Dreamcast was kind of like... If, the, if um, the Dreamcast had been more popular, we could have had a better future, frankly. Yeah, I did actually look up what the differences are between the director's cut version and the real version, out of curiosity. Mostly it's just graphical upgrades, but there's some weird changes. A lot of weird changes. So in Sonic Adventure 2, uh, there's only two plot lines, one for the good guys and one for the villains. And uh, it's based on... Can I, just, can I talk to people? I can. We're the exploration party searching for the ruins. I'm still new here, so they don't let me do anything fun. It seems like these guys are significantly far behind the archaeological advancements of several animals. When I got up this morning, the mountain was already here. I don't think it erupted from the ground, so it must have fallen from the sky. I know that sounds crazy. So there wasn't an amount there was not a mountain here yesterday. That's also good to know, I suppose. Well, well, well. If it isn't Sonic and Tails. Oh shit, it's that guy! Silence. I am Dr. Robotnik, the most cunning scientific genius in the world! Wait, hang on, is Eggman just a nickname they have for him? Dr. Eggman, enough! I've been working on a <laughs> plan, but now it's time to put it to work! It's Eggman! My name is Dr. Robotnik! Trouble coming from you! Don't even try to interfere this time. Give me that Chaos Emerald, or else... Or else what, huh? Or else I'll take it from you the hard way. He says, fleeing. I'm sure he's about to go plug into some kind of mech. I'll admit I'm more familiar with the lore of the old Sonic games. Um... My understanding is that after it uh, goes to your Egg Hornet, oh no. I don't have the homing attack if I'm not Sonic. How do I fight this guy? All systems, full power. Oh, like that, I guess. But yeah, um, it's, biz it's kind of bizarre. The translation to full 3D kind of had a totally new setting with, as far as I can tell, no setup whatsoever. Um, so the old the old idea of, you know, it's animal people world and this one human guy has come here to fuck up the animals for, you know, villain reasons. Which made sense, you know. That's all you really need uh, from an antagonist's grandmaster plan when you're seven years old. But... Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna keep harping on about how strange it is to translate them into a world with a with a new, with a an actual New York in it, not an animal people New York, but a, but for realsies New York, which I think gets destroyed by a space laser because there's kind of a tonal shift as well. Was this just a boss fight? Why is it making squelching noises? Too easy. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, he snagged it. Maybe we shouldn't, you know, let eight-year-olds be the sole guardians of vastly powerful chaos. Could use a little snap. Cosmic Good entities. Chaos. That's the monster I saw the other day. Uh, monster? I 
I think Dreamcast yeah, graphics. Yeah, yeah, it's really happening. Just what the stone tablet said it would. Oh, he's so jazzed. <laughs> the only competent yeah, voice actor. Chaos's strength increases every time I give him a Chaos Emerald. All he needs is seven emeralds to become invincible. Then he will turn Station Square into rubble, upon which I will build the ultimate city, Robotnik Land. <laughs> you ready, Chaos? Let's go find the next one. Come on. I'm already seeing several flaws with this guy's plan. But also, it's very nice of him to be like, now hold still there for a second while I'll explain my evil master plan. We can't let that monster get any bigger. It could get ugly. <laughs> You're right. Chaos must be stopped. Only and beautiful things are allowed in this world. Away from more emeralds, right? So what do you say, Sonic? Let's find the Chaos Emeralds before Eggman does. Ha! Huh. Ugly things deserve death, says Sonic the Hedgehog circa 2004. Oh, can I get up there? I bet I can. I'm also not entirely sure. Is this like an actually some kind of like weird experimental open world adventure? Like, am I supposed to go around to different places and do stuff? The wind zone. It looks like a key. Is this is this his lab? Is this Tails' lab? Oh, it is. It's got Tails' icon on the wall. I guess I'll come back with that. Anyway, the whole thing about Dr. Robotnik's name that fascinates me is that, um... I think the, orig or the origin of the confusion is that, like, he was called Eggman, or possibly Dr. Eggman in Japan. Um, and when this was, tr when the first Sonic games were translated for the American audience in 2000, in 1993, I want to say. What is if you have the stone of wind, gusts of strong winds are known to blow in the caves. Hang on a second, why do I have a fairy companion? That's another thing that's never really explained. Anyway, uh, so when they translated it, you know, it was, it was 1993, Cold War was literally only just over. Um, must have been nice not to have one of those for a bit. And, um... You know, it was still it was still good to give bad guys Russian names. Like, oh, he he's a bad guy who has robots. Doctor Robotnik. That all makes sense. Um, aha! So this is what the wind key does. Um, which is where presumably the the wonderful classic name of uh, Doctor Robotnik came from. And then I think it got incorporated, like, so that both were canon. My personal understanding has been for a very long time. <clears throat> Oh, it does sound like Tails is voiced by an actual child. I, I do like it when um, children voice child characters because it can lend an air of verisimilitude. The problem is that sometimes small children are bad bad actors. Um, you can very much tell when a child is kind of like doing voice acting and when they're just being said, okay, now say, we'll stop you, Dr. Eggman. And repeating it back to the... Huh. Interesting. Can I swim? <laughs> nope. One of the fundamental problems with um, figuring out the parameters of a game world that you're currently exploring is that games very often don't tell you what you can and can't do, and every single game has very different capacities as to what you can and can't do, which is something I will come back to in a moment after I finish talk talking about Dr. Robotnik. Uh, one piece of information that's always stuck in my mind forever is that according to, I think, the manual, or possibly the very first issue of the um, Sonic the Hedgehog comic books, uh, Dr. Robotnik used to be a good scientist called Dr. Kinterbor, who um, got, like, evil slime on him, I think, which caused his name to turn backwards, which caused him to turn backwards, which made him evil because he was good before, you know? That's, that's, that's sound, like, emotional logic, I think. Um, so, ever since he's been Dr. Robotnik. Oh! Hello. What's that up there? Can I smash this? Yeah. Evil slime. <laughs> there is nothing but evil slime in this setting. We've already met an evil slime in this setting. Um. But yeah, so... Uh, my personal opinion of the um, 
Robotnik Eggman dichotomy is that his name is Dr. Robotnik. Like, that's his given actual... You know, that's his actual first name. He is he is Dr. Robotnik. That is his... You know, he's got a doctorate and he's Ivan Robotnik or whatever the fuck his name is. Oh, shit. Come on! You should be able to find a shortcut if you fly. You made it! Get my dust, Sonic. I know we're supposed to be best friends, but fuck you. See you later, Tails! I think I'm going to die. <laughs> All right. Uh, hooray! Hooray! Screams Sonic the Hedgehog as his only friend and ward, maybe, falls to his inevitable death. Anyway, uh, so yeah, my opinion is that like Robotnik is his real name, his actual like person name, and Eggman is his supervillain name when he's doing supervillain stuff. Because you know, evil scientists can be supervillains too. That's a very common archetype for a. A super villain. Hey, hey, hey. Run the... You made it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the soundscape. Um, I think this is a secret zone, which are secret bonus zones, I guess. Um, which have been in every Sonic game, pretty much, where you get to explore and find special bonus things. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog special bonus. And that's the quality of humour you can find here on my channel. Did I? F I can't even. One of the problems with a 3D race course is that it can be very difficult to tell where you're supposed to go. <laughs> um, which isn't a problem if you're tied to the race course, which most 3D racing games do. You know, um, F Zero doesn't exactly let you go crazy up flying up in the sky. But you know, Tails' special power is that he can fly a bit. Anyway, I can't- I'm not sure if it's completely canonical that that's the case, that Robotnik is his real guy name and Eggman is his, his supervillain name, but it makes the most sense to me and I think it has yeah, some level of grounding. Bad. The train headed for Station Square will be departing soon. Is that what I was supposed to do here? was the objective of this level to find the that, because they didn't tell me that. Uh, anyway, yeah, so it's a fundamental- it's a really common problem in, uh, in games. The game has to teach the player, what can I do in this game? And games themselves have, a, you know, there's a certain level of literacy. You're supposed to know, you know, that you can do certain things in certain kinds of games. In platformers, you jump and you run around, but a lot of things that should be kind of consistent across games aren't, like swimming. Some games will let you swim, some games won't let you swim, will kill you instantly, some games won't let you swim, but will just prevent you from going in the water in the first place. And some games um, will sometimes let you swim and sometimes kill you if you try to swim. And it's up to you to figure out which is which. So... The reason why uh, the reason why Doctor Robotnik is a supervillain originally is pretty much that he wants to control the world, and in order to do that, he is capturing the small animals that are the inhabitants of the planet Moab. I'm not sure if it's Mobius or Moebius, but uh, the planet, the animal people world. Oh, hey, can I jump on this guy's head? Haha, <laughs> I'm a criminal. This is our base camp. Another party's already gone to the jungle, but we haven't heard from them in a long time now. I hope they're okay. Well, you did say that uh, this mountain wasn't here yesterday, so I suppose we should hope that the mountain has not in fact fallen on your comrades. Which is pretty rough as a rock drop goes. What do you got? What have you got for me, buddy? Oh, hey, I have a I have a melee attack. Does Sonic have a melee attack? Absolute genius trust here, like, is this man, like, simply a dedicated public servant who knows that the, the proper solution to, to things is to just call them whatever is most convenient? You know, nobody who goes to Windy Cave is going to be surprised by the wind. Or is he simply unable to come up with something better? Anyway, uh, Dr. Robotnik's whole deal is that um, he's, his robot servants have little animals inside them and he's using the animals to power the robots. So this, if you ask me is more evidence of his unacceptable criminality. But, unlike most of the uh, smashable robots, this one's in a cage, so I can't- I guess I can't smash that! I can gently buffer myself into a, uh... The hell is this? I wonder if I can put a seed there or something later. There's a lot of, um... 
completely random, unfounded ideas in games like this. This was the Wild West era of games, you know, that was just kind of do whatever the fuck you want and um, obliterate the natives in a way which will permanently cause vast amounts of trauma to entire communities for centuries to come. Um, so this is Chow's Garden, which I didn't know you could get to like this, I think. Which has these adorable little creatures called Chows in, which you can raise and tame. As I understand it, it's a more developed mechanic in the sequel. I don't have one. I don't have a Chow to name. It's it's not is it not an Easter egg? It's a a full on whole other system. Like it's a it's a thing. Unless you were referring to the egg that I saw on the ground a second ago, which is an Easter egg. By which I mean literally an Easter egg. It's it's got a chow in it, I think. Uh, you can get them out of their shell, and then you have a pet. I think I need to smash it. Yot. We go. Okay. Well, you smash them open in. Aha! There we go. <laughs> cool. I have a little buddy. That's good to know. Eggy, eggy, eggy. He's not happy because I guess I smashed his head in to get him out of his... his whatever. So in order to cheer them up, you rub their balls gently. Um, I'm not joking. They do look incredibly squishy though. I have, a, I have a deep and lasting desire to kind of just like jam my fingers up in one of these guys and see what, see what happens. But I have no idea what... I have no idea what you can do with them in this game, because I haven't played this one. As I mentioned previously, I played uh, Sonic Adventure 2 to death, but I was always very confused by the plot because I never played Sonic Adventure 1. I know you can feed them stuff, that's pretty much it. You can pick them up, I think, and do stuff with them, you can throw them around. And you can make evil chows by mistreating them, which we probably shouldn't, you know, ethically speaking, but it is pretty funny. I'm if I put you in here. Absolutely jack shit. Right, I'm gonna go back to what I should be doing, i.e. saving the world from Dr. Eggman. Man. The train <laughs> headed for Station Square will be departing soon. Gee, I suppose I should catch my train. It's, you know, it's, um... It's just the sign of a well-ordered and highly functional society that brand new mysterious jungle caves will have PA systems in, uh, installed so that uh, the local train station can provide uh, updates to anybody who wants to know what is going to be happening. You, uh, I don't know if... Actually, in the sequel you can do make a good one and, and an evil one and make them fight because the sequel has several mini-games you can play. You collect items as you play through the main game, and then you uh, can use those items to like level up your your chows. Uh, there's a racing mini game, and there's another mini game, and there is a karate mini game where they will do adorable toddler karate at one another. So yes, you can. One of the really delightful things about this game is that. Um, or is this or this series, I guess? This Oh god, oh god, oh god, I stepped inside accidentally. The uh, inescapable magnetic pull of the train carriage got me. But yeah, um One of the delightful things about coming back to <laughs> coming back to this era of, of of games is that you often just like what mechanics are in the game, dunno. You know? You constantly get bombarded with new things. They ask you to do stuff one time. Um, mini games abound. Oh shit, did I nearly get run over? Again, it's extremely peculiar to me that this is just- this is a world where- What's up with that girl? She's been standing there all day. Just staring into the burger shop. Oh my god, she's a woman after my own heart. Like, not to be all, haha, I do that, but haha, I do that. Is this who he's talking about? Probably not. What the fuck? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, is this not a real man? Oh my god, that's a mannequin. Okay, so the problem with this is that 
This mannequin has exactly as many polygons as this this real, actual human man. Sir, how do you feel about the completely lifeless doubles that exist in our world that just stand around completely motionlessly, these utterly perfect works of art that are 100% uh, indistinguishable from a real, actual, living human being, except that they never move or speak? Would you care to comment on that? No, you only can't. You, you only have eyes for Burger Girl. It's okay, I understand. Oh, is he talking about her? I thought he meant like a, a woman. Yeah, it does look real, doesn't it? Fucking freaky thing. <laughs> oh no, he must mean this girl. I like her. I like her low poly like heeled brogues, you know? I've seen real shoes that look like that and they're incredibly stylish, although they do maybe look like Mr. Mr. Silly's shoes. My heart is breaking. I can't just keep staring at him. I have to talk to that guy in the burger shop. Do you? And I need you to be very clear with me here. Oh, I can't pick him up again. No! My bit! Uh, I was gonna drink, bring him back over there. Anyway, so she wants to talk to this guy, I guess. The single most generic man anyone has ever seen on the planet. I feel like someone's staring at me. Yeah, I mean... Is this a side quest? Is this... Oh. Okay, cool. I don't know what that's for, but I'm glad to have it. Oh, that's a nice car. What is that, like a Maserati? Hey, you should... You should talk to the guy. Okay. So I'm going to conclude that side quests are not a mechanic in this game. This is an important thing to... Oh, shit. Can I just, like, draw a mustache on this guy since we've established this isn't a guy? This one can talk. This is terrifying. Is this a toy shop? Anyway, uh, the switch to full 3D... Um... Sonic the Hedgehog games kind of like recast the characters in various different molds. Sonic the Hedgehog became the sort of teen with baditude kind of caricature. Um, Tails became the soft-hearted, soft-spoken technological genius. And um, Amy became incredibly annoying. I like this guy's rad baseball cap. Want to give the casino a try? You might win money, gems, or have some laughs. That's what I heard. I think that advocating for teen gambling is probably unwise. Just generally speaking, any teens watching this, you probably shouldn't get involved in, in gambling, especially not for gems. I mean, I guess, mate, hmm. There are a lot more Pokemon trainers than there are animal people in 3D Sonic World. I'd like to believe that there is a canonicity between the two, that um, Sonic the he Sonic of Hedgehog um, and his pals came to Earth. The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. You know, from Mobius. But I do think that... Um, I think that um, both the 3D era games and the 2D games have charm, but I think the charm of the 2D games appeals to me a bit more. It's fascinating to me that, that they would go to the point of populating a city with NPCs, but then there's nothing you can do with them. Huh. This record shop only sells L's. Must be Matchbox, Matchbox 20 albums. Haha, <laughs> take that, Matchbox 20. I've never listened to a single one of your songs, but I know you're fun to dunk on. Yeah, no, I want to get the fuck out of here, but I don't know where to go. It didn't tell me. I can't go anywhere by train. Well, Sonic can't be the prequel to Pokemon because we know pretty much the entire history of the Pokemon universe from prehistory through to the modern day. I'm gonna... you know what? I'm Ollie and Outie. I'm going back to that delightful character select menu. With the uncomfortably uncomfort hairy Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Select your character. Let's get him. One of the things I do really like about the music is that 
Hi, I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. I ran across the Emerald Coast and found Tails, whom I haven't seen for a while. He had a great idea about creating something using a Chaos Emerald. He just loves making machines. What? He has a workshop in Mystic Ruins? I'll go visit it if you want me to. It's nice that they give you these little recaps, though. That's something I think a lot of games should actually have more often. Um, a lot of games I've played over the years, I lose track of what I'm supposed to be doing. And even in ones that have like a quest journal or whatever, it's nice to just have like, okay, the last few plot points you interacted with with these ones. So that's what that was. Anyway, a cool thing about the music the is that for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. pretty much um, every single character has This man is on cocaine. Um, every character has their own theme, which is the background music in the city levels, but is also their background music in cutscenes about them. <laughs> if it isn't Sonic! Oh right, the other side of the whole Rashomon thing they're doing. Well, I forgot about that. Scientific genius in the world. See, that implies to me that they don't already know each other. You're always up to no good. Now what do you want? I want all of the chaos emeralds. Better not interfere. Or else Or else what, you big loser? Or else I'll take them from you by force! The hard way. It's nice that Eggman's dialogue sounds like it was recorded in a broom closet to reflect the fact that he spends the entire game in a little mechanical bubble. But yeah, I think this establishes, a ca establishes as canon in this setting, in this version of this universe, there is not a, like supervillain history between these people. Sonic didn't know who Eggman is. Like, he, he's got no idea who this asshole is. Tails tells him. Tails says, you're always made up to no good, so presumably oh, Tails keeps up with the news and knows that, you know, Dr. Robotnik has been causing all kinds of trouble. It's starting to feel like this game is like two thirds boss All fights. Systems, full power. Ah, Bonk. He's not gonna get away with this. Instantly, these games have very, 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 very determined and dedicated uh, invisible walls. Where you can and cannot go is heavily gated, and that's in this version of the game. Apparently it was significantly more so in the previous, uh, the original version of the game on the Dreamcast. Hey, I'll play with you some other time! Why did I have 189 rings? He definitely hit me. Oh yeah, there's that squelching noise again. Well, that wasn't so hard! Aha! Oh no! Come on, Chaos! Time to eat! Chaos? It's so strange to me that they just reuse the same cutscenes but have different dialogue. Oh no, isn't that the same monster I saw the other day? Yeah, he's actively looking for the emeralds in order for to feed them to his gushy friend there. Sonic, we can't let him get away with this, can we? 
No way, Tails! Without more emeralds, the monster can't transform! So, it's up to us to get the emeralds before Eggman does, huh? Without the emeralds, the monster can't transform. Therefore, we should make sure to breach the ancient magical barriers guarding each of these mysterious uh, treasured gems. Yeah, as far as I can tell, Station Square is the name of the city. Um, it would be great if his if his vast evil ambitions only stretched so far as to like <laughs> like a quarter of a mile of real estate. Soon, the mayor will regret his refusal to grant me planning permission when I destroy his house and build a city in the ruins of his house specifically. On the other hand, Robotnik Land 100% sounds like a theme park, so maybe that's the whole dealie. So, I wonder if the characters actually function as kind of... Uh huh, interesting. This is different to the... Oh, we both died. This is different to the stage we had as Tails, so I'm starting to suspect that rather than different stories that interrelate to one another, uh, it's more like you pick a character, you play through the game, and then you pick a different character and you play through the game and you get the same story with a very slightly different perspective and slightly different dialogue. So I'm just going to be Sonic, because why would you want to be anyone other than Sonic, the Mr. the Hedgehog? Is an invisible path. Don't be afraid. Go through the gate. Good message for children. If your invisible friend tells you to hurl yourself into the open abyss, make sure to do so. I do like the vibes of this level, though. It's sort of autumnal. Oh, I wanted the life. So I do think I do think that there is a legitimate um, possibility of bringing the two D gameplay to these uh, to the three D versions of this game. But should be able to get out of the tornado. I think it would have worked better almost if you were locked to a single kind of like almost Jump a single two D track. It will take you to panels two and three. Jump as soon as you land on a panel or else you'll What was fall. I saying? Uh, almost, if, almost if there was just kind of like one one path, a single line, you know. Um, and maybe you could scoot side to side, but you couldn't really get over the edges the way you can in this. Um, because trying to make effectively a Super Mario uh, 64 style 3D game is where most of the problems with the 3D Sonic games come from. Oh wait, this is where this is where Tails' one started. I guess he just got to skip like half of it. See, segments like this is kind of what I'm talking about. Whenever it does this, but then expects you to scoot very slightly one side or the other, that's when it works. Um Oh, hang on, I'm not racing. I'm not racing Tails this time. I guess it was only a race the other time? But yeah, like the way they've tried to fit Sonic style speed gameplay into. Um... Whoa. Into like a Super Mario 64 style open. 3D platforming arena is is to have these kind of like length sections where you're locked on uh, to the track to some extent. But the fact that you can break that that locking incredibly easily, uh, and if you do so, you fall and die, <laughs> uh, is ultimately a problem. Uh, especially considering the way it sort of the hitboxes for physical objects aren't quite aligned right, so you can very much get stuck sort of bumping into. From bumping into things, um, or stutter stepping forwards when you shouldn't be, or suddenly losing traction in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop and falling. Um, I think either committing to slower full 3D, um, in fact actually a better way to make it work may have been simply to have a split between full 3D Super Mario style levels and um, 2D, but with, you know, 3D graphics. 
racing levels or sprinting levels, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, not bad. The train headed for Station Square will be departing soon. So I guess that was the plot objective of this this area. I think. I assume we'll be coming back here. I think there's like four, four or five of these different areas that you keep coming and going from. Now I'm. Hmm, I have to be very careful not to die here again. <laughs> oh, okay. Ladders are a thing. Another mechanic I wasn't expecting. Presumably one of the characters later will be able to swim. Or actually, no, I think Big the Cat has a fishing rod, so that's probably what that's for. So I guess what I need to know now is where exactly I'm supposed to go. Oh, hang on, maybe it was I was just supposed to go back to the hotel. Anyway, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stick to Sonic the Hedgehog, play through Sonic the Hedgehog's story first, uh, before I come back to any of the others and um, experiment with them. The manhole cover is open. Is that a hint that the manhole cover is now open? Perhaps there are secrets down it. And we all know that there's nothing more people love to do than delve in a manhole for secrets. There was a car over this on Tails' level though, so perhaps there is a secret down in this manhole. Every video game must have a sewer level, it's mandatory. Oh, okay, magic shoes, that's cool. Now you've got light speed shoes. Press and hold the action button to store up power. Once you have enough power, release the button and you can do the light speed dash. The light speed dash lets you race toward rings at light speed. As long as there's a trail of rings, you can go just about anywhere. So, uh, one of the things that is delightful. Use the light dash well, that didn't to work. run along the paths of rings. Hold the action button and let go when you have enough power. How do I know if I have enough? Ready? Oh, like that. <laughs> well, that was simpler than I was making it. But yeah, there's just incredibly powerful height. Excuse me, sir. Do you know that there's just an open doorway into the sewers? Like, I don't know if you understand the mechanics of a gas trap, but they're actually kind of necessary for any modern sewerage system. Perhaps this is why his shop has no customers. There's just a horrible fart stink coming from the room at the back that he won't let anybody ask him about. So yeah, in terms of inexplicable changes, that is the, uh, the city hall. And in the Dreamcast version, it had a clock tower on top. And in this version, instead of having a clock tower, it has the lower level again doubled. <laughs> Just completely kind of incomprehensible decisions. But yeah, um, I kind of I'm kind of starting to suspect that uh, this game's kind of canonicity at this era of Sonic the Hedgehog, there was just zero interest in it, and that's fine. I think that's actually a noble goal to suggest that. Um, oh, those aren't windows. Okay, to suggest that. Kind of everything is true simultaneously, including or indeed especially the contradictory stuff, was one of the kind of like interesting decisions they made towards the end of Homestuck, which is of course a comic built out of really peculiar and interesting ideas that were fascinating and worth uh, implementing and kind of experimenting with. No! Um, but yeah, so. One of the many questions you're not supposed to ask in this particular Sonic of Hedgehog is why is there stuff? Why is there stuff everywhere? You find mysterious, super powerful magic objects all over the- or, well, science objects all over the place? Why are there light speed shoes in the sewer? What's the deal with that? Whose idea was this? Oh, that was close. And there's a whatever this is in here. Well, I suppose this maybe belongs to the hotel, so I'm not sure you should be taking that, Sonic. This is the crystal ring. 
This reduces the time needed to store power for the light speed dash. Okay, cool. Was I supposed to find this later? Like... Monk. But yeah, uh, it's nice to find an upgrade and then an upgrade for your upgrade instantaneously. Um, right, so normally I would want to do a full two hour stream, but I have a high degree of jaw pain, presumably due to my terrible fucked up teeth that I'm still in the process of getting fixed, even though it's been like two months now that my channels have been on semi-hiatus due to it, so... Um... But yeah, no, Sonic the Hedgehog uh, is younger than the concept of, of private ownership, you know? Oh hey, another chow. What is this place? Is this is this Sonic's hotel room? Anyway, my jaw is extremely painful, so I'm gonna end this stream in a few minutes. Oh god, there's loads of information. Oh right, you can breed chow here. Okay, cool. That's kinda weird. I'm actually not going to read all of this right now because my I'm losing my goddamn mind. Chow race. Chow karate. Exit. Black market. I think I'll just get out of here. But yeah, there is there is a kind of a fascinating... I oh, okay, that's just how you go to chow, I guess? I'm literally... I have no idea how to make the story progress to the next section. It didn't tell me anything. I know that I can go to Twinkle Park if I can find a girlfriend, but that's, uh, I mean, in, in this day and age, you know, in the, a girlfriend in this economy? Are you kidding? Um, ow. What the fuck was I even talking about? I don't remember. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna... As soon as I figure out where I'm supposed to go next. Help? Help me. Anyway, as soon as I figure out where to go next, I'm gonna call the that a that a day. Um and go put my jaw in a puddle of ice water or something. You can really tell you can really tell when pain's getting a bit too much for me because I start going all drifty and stop being funny. Maybe there's something else I'm supposed to do at the at the the place. The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. But yeah, just a total lack of signposting about what I should be doing. Um, back from the highly peculiar days of before people knew how to make games be good. I don't think there's even any areas in here I haven't seen. Maybe if I... I wonder if I was supposed to find... Okay, I can't smash this guy and let him out. That's a shame. I, w I suppose you must be supposed to find the light speed shoes, right? It's not like a... Optional upgrade? It feels mandatory. Oh wait, this little child garden. I don't care about child garden. I could do without these tiny adorable freaks. The train headed for Station Square will be departing soon. Yeah, see that the fact that after we do the, the, the thingamajig in this zone it says the Station Square train will be departing. That makes me think I need to go back to Station Square. But back in Station Square there's nothing. No matter where I go or what I do. Maybe I can talk to Tails. I should have thought of that. Tails, are you here? Please help me. I'm losing my goddamn mind. Tails! Tails, you little bastard! Get out here! Oh, this must be the runway for his plane. That's a nice touch. Nice little detail that I thought to include his plane runway. I'm at a complete goddamn loss! <laughs> Uh, 
Please, sir, you look like someone who knows what they're doing. Clearly he's not. I gave him too much credit. Ah, you, you, help! Please, sir, I am lost. I am small child. Okay, that doesn't help me at all, but thanks. Hello, citizen. Nope, that's also not helpful. I've completely given up on reading out the inane comments these people say. And the NPCs in the game, haha! Suck it, Twitch chat. Um, no, please, please don't take that the wrong way. I, I love you, Twitch chat. Your inane comments are all I keep playing games for. And the insightful ones that make me be like, wow, you should be doing my job instead. What about this guy? Check out the door on the left if you want to go to the casino. I don't. I've been to the casino. Have I? Oh, wait. <gasps> this was locked before. This must be it. This must be where I'm supposed to go next, right? The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. This must be it, right? This, please, this has to be where I have to go next. I'm gonna lose my mind. You there, boy. Where am I? My mom went into the casino but hasn't come out yet. Okay, well that sounds like a case of addiction, so that's not really my deal, but um... Wait, is this the train station? Oh, this is a side door to the train station. That's good to know. Probably sucks for that kid, though. Aha. What about you? Incidentally, there's one button that is attack, talk to, pick up, throw, uh, and charge for special attack. Neon lights, great music. So this is the casino that everyone's been talking about. I wonder what that switch is over the sign. I always get the urge to press things like that. Everyone loves uh, game designers basically going, hey, 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 go do the thing, go, 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 hey, hey, go. How do I get to the switch though? I can't climb up here. Oh god, after all this I can't go into the casino? Oh wait, she meant this switch? Which I assume is going to give me a... Aha! Boink. This seems like a remarkably difficult way to get people into your casino. I don't know everything about everything, but I do know that casinos are deliberately designed to be very easy to enter and very hard to leave. They're actually, there's, there's actually a ton of psychological research that's gone into how casinos are designed, um, and they are literally constructed to be mazes uh, with a lot of confusing dead ends and loop backs, and it's almost impossible to find your way out because they just want you to get lost and headachey. Uh, and speaking of being lost and headachey, that's gonna do it for me tonight, folks. Uh, normally this would be a two hour stream, but I'm losing my goddamn mind and my jaw is about to fall off, so... Thank you so much for watching. Um, go check me out on YouTube if you haven't already. I make in-depth, well-researched, like, video essay -y full Let's Plays of games. Kinda hard to describe, I don't know. Uh, give me a follow here if you like my stuff. Give me a, a follow there. Thank you to my Patreon patrons, um, for all their patronage. And similarly, my Kofi donators, if you want to be one of those people, check out the links on my About page. There's also a Discord where I post stream announcements and that kind of thing. So yeah, go check all of those things out, person who is still here and doesn't know all of this stuff, of whom I suspect there are zero. Thanks very much for watching. I love you all very much. I say quietly, surreptitiously inculcating a... Uh, parasocial relationships, so watch out for that. <laughs>